That's one side of the equation. There's another school of thought which says, no. DML error logging. We use DML error logging to be able to delete records from a parent table and have it automatically skip those parent rows that can't be deleted because they have an associated row in a child table linked by a foreign key. Uh, it's a way of not having to implement delete cascade or have to delete all the ch uh, check all the child rows first. We want to use DML error logging in this case, but we're having dramas. So let's have a look. So a quick background on DML error logging for those who have never seen it. There is an existing video of mine on my YouTube channel, but I'll fly through this very quickly just to bring everyone up to speed. We've all had this hideous moment in our lives where we're doing an insert, copying all the rows from a massive table. So what happens? This is what happens. It takes forever. So we go get ourselves a coffee. We come back and guess what? It's still running. And then we might do a bit of home banking on the internet and we come back and it's still running. It's just very frustrating. But thankfully, the thing runs and finally, after six hours and 12 minutes, it is done. And you're very happy until this you see this. And the whole thing got blown up because one row, one lousy row broke it. All that six hours has now been flushed down the toilet. It's a very disheartening kind of thing to see. And it's funny when that happens, when you try insert a billion rows into a table and it crashes and rolls back, it's funny how you'll still do this. You're just like praying that hope beyond hope that some of the rows made it, where obviously we know that with a single transaction, they didn't. What we want to do is keep the successful rows and ditch the bad rows when we're doing things like a large insert or any kind of operation, which is huge volumes of data and there might be a few outliers. But that's actually hard to do because if I was going to craft that X SQL statement, to avoid the bad rows, I have to craft an enormous amount of where clauses to come up with all the potential errors that could be there. You know, because I might have check constraints on the table, I might have foreign keys, I might have invalid data types. It's virtually impossible to do, which is where DML error logging comes in. You create an error log table based on your target table that creates this sort of superset table, which is going to catch all the bad rows when you actually try and do an operation. If I had some incoming data like this, I'm trying to copy this data into my employee table and three of those rows are actually bad. The employee number is non-numeric there. You can see there we've got no department 50. So that's a foreign key violation. And 7934 is actually a duplicate to a row that's already in the employee table. Rather than just doing an insert select, you pre-create an error logging table at the start and then add log errors reject unlimited, which means I don't care how many errors I get, I'm going to capture them all. If that's going to be way too many, you could say limit it to 50, and then it would simply bomb out after 50. But you can see at the end of that, even though I had four rows on the incoming table, I only logged one of them, and the other three got logged in my error logging table. So that's DML error logging in a very, very quick nutshell. So back to the problem. They were trying to delete parent records where there may, may or may not be a child record and they wanted to catch them with DML error logging. So I've got a parent table and a child table. I'm gonna put three rows into my parent table, values one, two, and three. And I'll put several rows into the child table, but you can see there's only rows for parent one and parent two. So if I was gonna delete from the parent, I could delete parent value three, but I couldn't delete parent one and two because there are child rows in there. And we can see, if I try to just do a delete from parent, I get an error saying there's a child record found. This is what we're trying to work around with DML error logging. So let's give it a go. DML error log, create an error logging table for my parent table. This is the now syntax, delete from par, log errors, reject unlimited. And you can see it didn't delete all the rows, it just deleted one row and a couple of rows were dumped into our error table. It looks like it works fine. So as you can see out of the box, you can use DML error logging to handle foreign key parent child deletion uh, issues, as opposed to having to worry about delete cascade, etc. So that's fine. Let's roll it all back and see why this person was having some problems. Often when we do deletes and updates or any kind of DML, we want to capture what's gone on as some sort of audit trail as to what's been going on in the system. And this is the kind of thing you might see. I've got an audit log table and every time I do a delete on my parent table, I've got a trigger just to capture the fact that someone has done something. Normally we'd have a lot more details, but I'm keeping this nice and simple. 
I'm saying someone did a delete at this particular time and they tried to delete this particular parent. Let's go back and redo our DML error logging test again. So I'll trunk up my error table. Here's the delete and it stops working. Even though I've said I want to log errors and re reject unlimited, it didn't say one row deleted, it bombed out. And that's the problem. If you have a trigger on the table that you are doing DML error logging on, and it's a foreign key arrangement, other constraints, things like you know, unique, unique keys, check constraints, they seem fine. Just this one, where you're deleting from a parent on child and you have a trigger on the parent, this bombs out. DML error logging doesn't work. Let's roll it back. It's not what's in the trigger. It's simply the existence of the trigger that matters. So if I replace a trigger with this null, it's doing nothing. Trunk of my error table, it still bombs out. DML error log looks for the presence of that trigger and says, no go, you don't get to do DML error logging on these foreign key relationship ones. Let's roll it back again. Let's explore a bit further. If the trigger is not a row level trigger, so in this case, I've got before delete, but I've taken out the for each row. So now it's a statement level trigger. It works fine. And I didn't put it in the demo, but similarly, if it's an after statement trigger, it also works fine. It's a row level trigger that causes the problem. So let's drop that trigger now and let's explore one final option. If rather than doing a standard row level trigger, I make it a compound trigger, which came in an 11G, but still the only element of that compound trigger, which can contain all the various triggering levels, the only element is the row level. So it's really synonymous with a low, row level trigger. It works again. A row level trigger does not work, but a compound trigger, which only has a row level element, does work. That is the workaround that we have provided to this uh, customer. Now, having said that, that's the workaround. This is an important caveat. I need to stress. When we discovered this, I went and spoke to some people in support and looked at the bug database that we have inside Oracle. And at the moment, there's a debate going on as to whether it should be not be allowed in any circumstance, because ultimately, when you have a foreign key relationship, you've got these constraints that really aren't on the parent table. The constraint is actually on the child table. And so one side of the argument inside the Oracle database organization is that if the trigger is on there, you can't do DML error logging. The bug is that the compound trigger allows it. That's one side of the equation. There's another school of thought which says, no, triggers shouldn't have an impact on DML error logging. So we should fix a bug in the row level trigger that isn't a compound trigger. At the moment, it's up in the air as to which side the coin will fall onto. So this is a workaround, but be aware that there may come some point in the future where it simply says, we don't care what trigger you put on, we're going to block it. Or there might come some point in the future where we might say, we don't care whatever trigger you put on, we're going to work no matter what. Uh, I hope it's that obviously, but I just let it let you know that this workaround is currently obviously up for debate because we don't know exactly sure where we're going to be heading with this one. But there you go. An interesting side effect of DML error logging on row level triggers and then compound triggers to the rescue. <laughs>